Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I'll briefly talk about yet another term pertinent to postcolonial studies dependency theory. Now, dependency theory, of course, as the term suggests, is about dependence. But what it articulates and expresses is this idea that the underdevelopment in the so-called third world and the developing world isn't necessarily because of the internal causes or because of the general malaise of those local cultures, but rather the global economic system is developed and maintained in a way that according to that system, certain parts of the world have to be kept in check, have to be impoverished for the North Atlantic regions to be successful and be uh, as prosperous as they are, and that they depend on this poverty elsewhere in the world to sustain their own economies. Now, this is on the same lines as the world system theory, uh, famously like made popular by Emmanuel Wallerstein and others who also argued that other than the individual actions, most of what happens in the world is because we are caught within larger systems. But in the post-colonial world, this makes a lot of sense because the first instance of the European influence was the actual physical occupation of colonized lands and extraction of raw, raw materials, right? And even when the colonizers leave, most post-colonies still remain dependent upon the former mother countries or the economic system which is in place. And even if they try to articulate and reshape their own economies, they still have to contend with the way the global economy works, who gets to decide how things happen. You can see the example of, of it right now, how dependency theory actually impacts the developing nations, right? Uh, for example, Pakistan just last week renegotiated its deal with IMF, right? IMF, because of its loans that it has given to a country like Pakistan, has so much power that it can not only dictate macroeconomic policies, it can actually tell Pakistani governments, you need to cut down salaries of people in this range, you can't give raises to your people because they are trying to protect their own loan, right? And that they're shareholders. But in the process, Pakistan's economic policy and so many other countries is absolutely completely dependent upon forces outside of their power. And that's a direct impact of the dependency global economy, dependent global economy. The indirect consequences are that these countries, um, you know, they have to catch up where, wherever the world economic system is, right? So their emphasis is not on building their own infrastructure or building their own, uh, you know, national labor force. It's just how to remain viable in an ever-changing economy whose terms are still dictated by the powerful nations of the world. So that is what dependency theory tries to explain, that, that African nations, Asian nations, developing nations, we can't simply just blame them for not doing things right. It's also the reason they have so many problems. It isn't just because of their internal corruption but because they are working in a global economic system in which they have no say, right? And they have mandates that are established outside. Now, the best work on this, right, uh, quite a few economists, but Samir Amin has a beautiful book on that, right? Uh, quite a few Indian economists have written wonderful books on it. I'll post the links um, in the description below. But generally speaking, dependency theory tries to explain as to how even after the colonies become free, the strings, you know, are still pulled by the metropolitan cultures. Now, a great fictional account of this is, uh, I think, Ngugi Chiango's novel, uh, Devil on the Cross. I mean, there is a whole scene there in the cave where he stages that on the stage there are five or six people from Europe who are sitting there in judgment 
while in a farce kind of situation the native elite come and try to convince them as to who amongst them has been the greatest plunderer. So yeah, Devil on the Cross is a great example of, of actual implications of the dependency theory and dependent politics on the post colonies. So these are some of my views on this. Uh, I hope these are useful and I hope you read it further. Now, one cautionary note here, and that is that in post-colonial studies, if you're going to argue that so much of the ills are visited upon the post-colonies because of this dependence, please also make sure that we can't just use that as an excuse, right? Whatever we can do within the power of our national structures is absolutely, it goes without saying that our governments should do. Dependency comes into play only when their freedom to actually structure things and do things uh, is over-determined or restricted by powers outside of the national borders, powers that control the purse strings, powers that control whether nations live or die, you know, uh, all of these things, and that can be covered under dependency theory. So that's all I have to add today. Uh, I hope this was useful. Please feel free to send me any questions that you might have through the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. If you're interested in a more concerted and organized mode of learning, please do check our website cross-cultural learning. The link is in the descriptions and see what kind of courses we are developing, free and paid. Thank you so much for your time and as always, peace and love.